chapters 12, 13 and 14 are the section of chapters that are about gifts and public worship and various problems that had arisen in the church at Corinth. Paul is very keen in chapter 14 to set the Corinthians straight on two particular gifts. Uh, firstly, the gift of tongues. Secondly, the gift of prophecy. Remember, this had already been set in context. Everyone in the community, in the life of the church, then and now, have certain and particular gifts. All these gifts are exercised in and through and for the community, uh, for the wider community, those inside the church and those outside the church. And love is the guiding principle. So in meeting together, everything is done for, as it says in verse 2, building up for the strengthening of the church. But because the Corinthians are a, a peculiarly boisterous and, uh, and chatty people, Paul really now drives this point home. How is the church strengthened if everyone is babbling in tongues? Remember, tongues are from within and are subjective. And this just leads to chaos. Therefore, without an interpreter for the tongues, uh, Paul, it, Paul insists that each, what, each of them are to stay silent. Verse 28. That's the first of three calls to silence in this section that we're looking at. Now he turns to the prophetic voices. Remember, prophecy is not from within, but from without. It's not subjective, but it's objective. It's a word from that other place that we saw yesterday. So if there is more than one person to prophesy, Paul says, wait your turn, stay silent, verse 30. This becomes the second call to silence that we see in the church. The constant noise and babbling would have been disorientating and meaningless. How can a gathered congregation listen to God when all around so many people are vying for their own voice to be heard? Isn't this just typical of the Corinthians? Paul is assuming that throughout the gatherings, the edification of the congregation is simply impossible without congregational comprehension. Remember, Paul had said in uh, chapter 14, verse 19, I would rather speak five words with my mind than 10,000 words in a tongue. Why? Because intelligibility trumps incoherent babbling every single time. Finally, for prophesying and speaking in tongues, Paul asserts now his apostolic authority. He says, the word of God, Corinth, did not originate with you, verse 36. You are not the only ones that it has reached. You're not an island of Christianity, Corinth. And Paul then says, and the truly spiritual ones, if this is what you're claiming, they know that I'm speaking the truth. So therefore act accordingly, Corinth. And he ends by encouraging prophes prophesying. He encourages speaking in tongues. But he says, but do it well. Do it in love. Do it in good order. Wait for one another. Be patient. And after addressing two kinds of keeping silence, Paul now addresses a third kind. That women should keep silent in the churches. What could he mean? 